A gray shark's fin cuts through the streets while the children of blue bicycles gather before dark columns of ash. The women in the morning sunlight come filtering through skyscrapers wearing weaknesses of gum and steel while designer thin necklaces of cigarette smoke decorate the wiry nerves of lust. It's the blue and white men wearing knives who move this art along. So the drowning pigeons in open air make hapless celebrations. How many of our instincts must be encased in metal before wary eyes can rest among the leaves of vines? Before soot-covered feet with broken nails can sing in a festival of sharpened sparrows? Before bloodied hearts can be drunk from thin paper cut cups warm to the touch? All of this before nothing. All of this before filth can be allowed into loading docks of lavender and rose. All of this before wind got wind, wa before water got wind of its marriage, before finding the quickest path to the nearest nest of spiders, who call the wireless keyboards home, and electricity for protection against the oil of the rotting sun. I'm not being lazy. I'm weighing the world against myself. I just don't see the inconvenience being worth the inconvenience. Tomorrow is an anxiety, while yesterday is evidence that must be destroyed. Now fades without my influence, so where is it that I can stay? There's no place to even sit, no place to be alive until it all stops. You'll need my small intestines to digest me watching the white caps on the rough water of the narrows, on a windy day blocking driveways, turning the radio down to write this poem. The trees bend while I choose not to. And it's all the same without the leaves. Stopping above some baseball fields and grandiose brick houses on plots of land caged by fences or walls, lifting them off the ground. There are scraps of po ca police caution tape on one of the benches, snapping like flags toward pleasure, constantly trying to relieve the pain, any pain, even the slightest. And it's the pain you don't notice that's the most excruciating. Now I can endure breathing, but nothing as taxing as getting dressed and cleaned and leaving the house to do things that aren't the least bit entertaining. You live the way you do because others told you to and we can't survive alone. I never wanted to tell you who I was. Now I might as well, since the wire fed the hook down my esophagus into my stomach, where the point sank into the stomach wall and dragged it inside out up through my throat and out of my mouth. The colors of my guts and entrails cover the entire range of human skin tones, along with some interesting shades of red and green, dark and light varieties of each. And we're all so used to the smell now that it doesn't bother us anymore, even when my insides get dragged across a hot griddle for 30 seconds or so, then onto your plate, and dinner is served from my mouth to yours. This one is called Small Volcanoes. Tattoos are put onto skin by artists. Tattoos are put onto skin by concrete. Yes, tattoos are put onto skin by artists. The ribs are an uncomfortable place to get a tattoo, or so I've heard, especially if the artist is tattooing sunflowers. Fists onto sunflowers, falling between two parked cars, Falling onto a cactus patch, falling onto a square of Brooklyn sidewalk, falling into the ocean, falling on your head. With my right eye open, as wide as possible, I said to the nurse, this is me, surprised. And surprise, limping is frustrating. So are kicks to the ribs and the thought that you could have been ready. So I'll be more ready. I'll be so ready that people find me suspicious because I'm so aware and ready like I know something is about to happen and I'm hiding this information to serve some purpose that is beneficial to me and only me. I can become so ready that I'll be institutionalized and will frequently wear straight jackets and orderlies will have to be very careful around me because I'm so ready I can be a bit bitey sometimes. One must be ready to wear a muzzle. Dogs are ready, very ready. Most dogs are more ready than people tend to be, so because it's usually really ready dogs who wear muzzles, the people who wear muzzles are the most ready and these people never get snuck up on. An animal that's even more ready than that is the shark. Streamlined and constantly moving, the beautiful bull shark looks like a naval ship. Gray along the top, 
white along the bottom. It's the most beautiful, efficient fucking thing you'll ever see. It's seamless. It glides. No naval ship could ever achieve that kind of seamlessness. The ability to move through cold water searching for things to bite into is still best done by sharks. They do it naturally while the Navy has to work at it. So I figure my goal should be to be so ready that I appear to glide, only stopping to bite into things. Keeping in mind, though, a shark might not bite into you simply because it sees you. And those who try to save animals are still at the mercy of the animals they're trying to save. I am not part of your tribe. I am other, otherwise, otherworldly, paying my debts when my government can't pay theirs. I am not part of your tribe. Ahead of the curve when dealing with people, I am not part of your tribe. I am not part of people. I don't work all the time. I am diligently lazy. I am not part of your tribe. The debt collectors will take what I give them, and I'll only pay what's in my father's name. I am not part of your tribe. I am a tree grown from poisoned soil, who borrows infinitely and never returns. I am not part of your tribe. I never speak. If you listen closely, you'll hear me wearing a mask, committing crimes. But the crimes I commit are victimful, and they'll take what I give them. I am not part of your tribe. I am for the removal of standards. I am for the porn addicted, wasteful, diseased, the desperate criminals, survival experts. I am for building tops, stairways, blunt guts, antennas, tall trees. I am for the train stations, windows, pages, cemeteries, pages of writing. I am not part of your tribe. I am for the rhythm of the train, the oppressive rhythm that imparts itself to indifferent commuters. I am for the movement. I am for distances covered and yet to be covered. I am not part of your tribe. I am for the chipped gray paint. This week, next week, I am for the new world. Drones transporting civilians to their destinations where they bear the cross of optional paralysis. I am not part of your tribe. And I will say so to the hedge maze, hedge funds, hedge clippers. I am not part of your tribe, but I've got a trick up my sleeve. I always take souvenirs in the form of heads and hands, but maybe this one time, a tongue, an eye, an ear, a nose. I am not part of your tribe. So when you try to take my tongue, eyes, ears, throat, when you try to take my head, hands, legs, and lungs, when you try to take my home, thoughts, plans, time, I've got a trick up my sleeve, and the debt collectors will take what I give them. Mm. After auto fellatio, I spat on the hardwood floor in my room and some grass grew there. <laughs> it reminded me that I am part of a 1% minority, which is not particularly encouraging. What I was really hoping for was that a full-grown leopard would grow out of the diversity of globs and drops of spit and semen scattered over a small vicinity of the scratched parquet floor. Instead, I got long, uneven fingers of yellow-green grass forming a tight patch, rising up about a half a foot. It's in the middle of the floor and I cringe every time I pass barefoot over it, which I have to do every time I leave and enter the room. I guess I shouldn't be so surprised. I should have never expected a leopard. I'm nothing in comparison to the sun, no matter how much I may pretend otherwise. Well, fuck it. Maybe I should be thankful for grass. After all, it is alive. And I can speak to it, as well as anyone speaks to any animal. Yeah. Of a trip to London is Iceland. I saw a sign that said, you don't have to reveal your identity to help solve violent crimes. And a man with a shovel digging graves in the street. You don't have to solve your identity to help reveal violent crimes. And some crooked trees. You don't have to reveal violent crimes to help solve your identity. And a clean white skeleton on a broken sidewalk. You don't have to help solve crimes to reveal your violent identity. But my cat just had kittens and died while giving birth to them, and my girlfriend is cheating on me mercilessly. Boy, it's a good thing that I embody aspects of every decade that came before me as if I have always been alive and will always be alive. Because if I didn't, my landlord would raise my rent. <laughs> All right, 
I'm gonna go through a couple more. Disclaimer. Luxury is manifested in cup holders and online shopping. It's nip <laughs> and it's an expression of diligence and the rationale for putting oneself through systems of filtration. I work because soon enough I won't be able to. And when I can't, how will I survive? I work so when the kids are born, I'm ready to give them what they need, what I think they need, what I never had. I work because if I don't pull my weight, everyone will know I'm an asshole. I work to justify resting, to justify my presence, and in some cases to, ki to kill time. I work to build calluses so the wind doesn't tear in my skin, so I don't feel so cold so I can win in a fight, so as to not be a target for thieves. I work to support my poetry habit, for whiskey, weed, wine, porn, pills, food, coffee, etc. There's nothing I want more than her. Keeping working keeps her around. I'd rather not do anything, and I like being alone, and she gives me my space, and her opinion matters. Unfortunately, so does yours. My parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends, employees, employers, co-workers, and complete strangers. I worry about how you see me, but never about how I actually am, because all of you are reality, and I have the tendency to not exist. Fruit. Uh, you could ask me what a mame is later on. Fruit. The mame seed eating its way out until Maya, with a large knife, cut up the fruit and marveled, Ooh, what a nice color. The smooth, dark brown stone stretched a thick pink root wanting water, dirt. My grandfather once told me that I'm like my uncle, that my eyes roll around in my head too much. If you were to shake me hard, I'd be able to answer whatever questions you have. Hey Tom, do you think I'll ever be rich and famous? Shake, shake, shake. Left eye, outlook not so good. Right eye, ask again later. I was in the pool at the hotel we stayed at. My grandfather was poolside with my parents. My grandmother was in the room we rented that was nicer than where we lived. Two girls staying at the hotel who were around my age were chasing each other around the pool in their bikinis. I was watching the girls out of the corner of my eye every second. Tom, will I ever find true love? Shake, shake. Left eye, certainly. Right eye, no. <laughs> my uncle used to sell crack, crash rental cars, carry guns and pistol whip whoever imposed on his territory. When I got older, and he gave up this lifestyle to work on boilers, save money, and live in a house married with two cats, we would smoke blunts together. Sometimes he'd pop a few Xanax and tell me stories. The pills made him talkative. Tom, will I live a long, healthy life? <laughs> shake, 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 shake. Left eye, probably. Right eye, no. <laughs> Is there danger up ahead? Shake. Left eye, ask again later. Right eye, ask again later. My eyes do wander, because women are architecture, and apartment buildings are women with hallways, women are music, and streets are women with cars and bicycles, factories are women who smoke, school buses are women full of children, women are dusk. The sun and the moon are two women who are lovers. Tom, given the state of the economy at this current juncture, will the construction of more non-man-made rivers and lakes contribute to the overall humidity in a positive way? Or will these newly made unartificial waterways make us ill with buzzing and sucking and splashing against the sides of the tub once we become soapy and slick and my body rhythmically sliding against yours brings the tide in? Shake, 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 shake. Left eye. Ask again later. Right eye. Maybe. I am like my uncle in a lot of ways, and my uncle is a lot like my grandfather. I am a lot like my father. Less like my grandfather, but more like my uncle. My sister is not like any of us, and I am similar to my mother in a lot of ways. If you knew my family, however, you would wonder if I were adopted. <laughs> if I continue speeding along the highway instead of stopping when the highway patrol officer puts on his lights and siren and speeds up alongside, urging me to pull over by pointing his finger emphatically toward the shoulder, will I get to a point where the horizon ends, or at the very least is obscured by hideous man-made structures? 
shake and shake and shake and shake and shake. Left eye, reply hazy, try again. Right eye, signs point to yes. 